Welcome, Welcome to Snowmobile Sessions Live on YouTube and your favorite podcast platform. We're the number one destination to learn about snowmobiling, network with other sledders, and have an awesome time doing it. We'll meet other snowmobilers that share your passion and show your fan photos along the way. Snowmobile Sessions Live. Enjoy the ride. It's a journey. This episode of Snowmobile Sessions Live is brought to you by our friends at Energy Power Sports. They're Oakville's full-line BRP dealer with sales and service to all BRP models and so much more. I bet you they still have some Black Friday sales going on. So why don't you check out energypowersports.ca or pop by their store in Oakville. It's pretty rocking. And don't forget to check out their YouTube channel, Energy Power Sports on YouTube. And away we go. It's also brought to you by Fast Track Traction Products. You know, modern tracks have come a long way from tiny lugs of years ago, but there's one thing they'll never be able to do, and that's penetrate ice. If you ride trails, you'll come across icy situation, and that's where Fast Track Studs Kits can help you. They take a unique approach to studding a snowmobile with design materials and stud kits templates you heard it all last week from chris at fast track so make sure you go on to fasttrack.co there's no k in track so it's f-a-s-t-t-r-a-c.co put your studs in the cart put your backers in the cart your nuts in the cart don't pinch your nuts when you put them in the cart <laughs> and then why don't you add the toolkit to the cart and then when you use the, the coupon code snow s-n-o-w that toolkit is absolutely free. Thanks a lot for shopping at Fast Track. Don't forget, we're going to hear more when we hit the fan photos of that one. And it's also brought to you by the Super Fans. And uh, last week, we had off the cuff adventure that Jamie, he come in as a ditch banger. And then he was followed up Mike Ghoulies with 20 bucks. Oh, yeah. Sometime is now matched. He said $20 towards some leaders. Thanks for all you do, Gary and Rich. Boom. And the old one, he won the day with the Mountain Madman and uh, came in with $27.99. So thanks a lot, guys. Really appreciate that. Woo. Holy. How you been, Rich? Good, buddy. How are you? It's been a good, good. week, man. Yeah, it's been awesome. Oh, yeah. Good snow. It's getting cold. Yeah. Sleds it was, are starting it was to show up for everybody. So it's good, man. Were you bored this weekend, not doing anything? You know, like we had no, such I, a busy I, weekend last weekend with energy, power sports, open house, and then we had the the sledderam on Sunday. Yeah, it was good, man. I was busy. It was good. It was nice. It was good. Looking yeah. forward to snowmobiling, though, man. It's getting it. I'm starting to get the itch. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, yeah. It's the the itch is here. I was. Oh yeah. I I told you off air. I started thinking about the renegade on the weekend there. Mm -hmm. Told, Corey told planted Corey, the seed. <laughs> yeah, I told Corey it's his fault. Yeah. You know, uh, maybe I'll bring that down next week and show show the fans what Corey gave me. So, but, yeah. uh, it got me thinking about the sled big time. So that's cool. Well, let's bring in our guest. Yeah, we're gonna have a good show yeah, today. An awesome show. We got Clark Wilson for Bergstrom Skeggs. How you doing, Clark? Good. How are you, fellas? Awesome. Very Clark. well. Very Thanks well. Thanks very much for having me on. Appreciate it. Hey, no yeah. problem. Hey, we uh, we talked to you a bit down at Sledorama and had a good time there, and you had a busy booth. Holy cow! Yeah, we uh, we take a pretty good beating uh, when Clay and I make it to those shows. Um, we have a lot of guys that look for us pre the show to ensure we're coming and what we're bringing, and it, it gets pretty pretty hectic. Toronto's insane, but Peterborough, um, it, it's it's really turned out to be quite the show for us as well. So it's nice to be at both of them. Yeah. yeah, how was, was the traffic? How was the traffic compared to other years? Was it busier than normal? Yeah, there it was much busier. A lot of bigger outreach this year. Um, seemed like uh, we reeled in. It looks like we reeled in from that from that west side of the city. Usually, it divides. Um, Toronto takes half that traffic, and there was a lot of guys eager to get to a show just to see something. And they, we, there was guys there. We talked to some guys from Niagara Falls. We had some guys from Essex. We had guys from Barrie, Huntsville, North Bay. Um, we even had some guys in from Newfoundland that came specifically for that show. So it's, nice. it was pretty wild. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Wow, that's crazy. 
They, mm. The Newfoundland can't wait for uh, Quebec to separate because that'll cut an hour out of their drive to the show. <laughs> it's uh, Yeah, those shows pull people from a lot of places, right? I mean, Toronto brings in from just about everywhere. Um, but Peterborough, I think, took that most of that traffic this year, which is quite interesting to see. That's yeah, awesome. Sure. Let's see who's in the chat. We got uh, Brad right. Hitchcock. He says he's ready, and he's got the cartwheelers, Bruce Stewart's in there. Uh, snowstorm. Hey, boys and girls, anyone get their snow checks yet? Uh, Some time is now. Greg, hey, welcome aboard. Of course, he's there. Brianna Hamilton, who let the guy host any? Who let this guy host anyways? Uh, Jay Flylo, hey, Jay. And we got David Miller, Pro Polaris, our new buddy, Rich. He's, he's yeah. in there. He says, good evening, fellas, fellow shredders. And he gives us a big fist pump. Or maybe he's punching us. I don't know. Corey Brock, <laughs> sup, boys. What's up, Corey? Gordon McBride, Neil Owen. He's praying the snow go to the snow gods, and it seems to be making. Or maybe it's just the beer he's drinking. He's probably got the Barmy Blondes going. And uh, Odie the Sled and Neil, to Neil on the weekend. Yeah, did you? Yeah. Hey, yeah. you got to get Neil to give you some of the podcast beer. Look at this. Have you ever been <laughs> on a go. podcast with their own beer? The Ballistic yeah. Army Blonde? Yeah. I need more of that. Yeah, we'll get you more. So Drinking water. <laughs> yeah. This isn't water, but I could get Coors Light. <laughs> that would do it. Jesse Buckman. Hey, sh hey boy, it's going to be a great show. Uh, who else is in there? Who did I miss? Sorry, Dominator286. Who? Uncle, Uncle Buck? Buck? Is yeah. Mrs. Uncle Buck there? If Mrs. Uncle Buck put in a chat, Mike Goulis, yeah, I love him too. David Barker, I think I mentioned Canuck Power Sports. Uh, it goes on and on and on. Uh, lots of chat going. Hey, Sled Addicts is yeah. in there. Mike's in the house. And uh, who else? We got a good story from Mike uh, Eisenberg uh, to share tonight. Uh, Bruce Stewart. Uh, yeah, I see there. Who else we got? TV. TV. <laughs> We're on TV. Uh, I don't know who else. There are tons of them. Too many to Tony name Cat. off here. Tony Katz. Tony Katz. You know, he's been usually working, so that's good to see him. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He messaged me. We thought we, we Rich and I were starting to feel unloved from Tony Cat, and then <laughs> and then he messaged me out of the blue, and we know the yeah. love's still there. But yeah, so well, that's good. So hey, this isn't about us, Rich. It's about Clark. So All Clark, right. I guess I want to ask one question. That's been on my mind a lot is where does the name Bergstrom come from? So Bergstrom is the the last name of the original owner of Bergstrom. Um, so Scott Bergstrom was the original owner of the company. Um, company been around for a long, long, long time, and that's where the the name of the company originally started from. Um, so we kind of always operated under that name, and then um, since my brother and I took things over. We divided into two different sides, um, just for the, between the Canadian side um, and the American side. So my brother and I, Clay, have always been involved for about the, about the last 15 or 16 years. And then it's just in the last couple of years that we divided uh, between two separate entities between Canada and the U.S. Nice. Right Nice. And, and skegs, is that an American term or is that a Canadian term or is that a, is that an old term? Like where does it, like you hear. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I think it's more of a, it's more of an American thing and an old thing. Um, for a long time we spent um, most phone calls redefining what it exactly was that we were doing. Um, and we just never changed that off of there. Um, that seems to be where we're known the best in the U S. So, you know, we, we operate as triple point carbides up here in Canada. Um, but still, I mean, it's just the, basically the Canadian version of Bergstrom Skaggs. Yeah. Nice. And, uh, how long you said to, since you and your brother taken over, you want to, you want to give us some backstory on that? Like how long has that been and, and what, what's so the process in, there? In, involved, um, probably minimum 10, 12 years, I guess. Um, officially taking everything over uh be just about three years now um that we took yeah. it all over so it was a very you know it's been a long transition essentially more and more each year um and, and scott essentially was um just looking to wind down and be more of a grandpa than be involved as much as he was and you know he wanted to sit around for a little while and do some of the think tank stuff 
most of the think tank stuff was being delegated up here for clay and i over the years anyways so like testing and designing and tweaking and getting things ready to put in the snow um so it really wasn't a huge change uh to do what we did um it was done very quickly and neat and tidy and we didn't change anything uh we didn't change where we're making them how we're making them or who's making them other than that there's a lot less presence of scott he just wanted to do the grandpa thing and i mean he you know he earned that so that's okay that, that's a nice respect to to him as a as a businessman you know keeping the baby the same but it also is a true test of how good the product really is yeah we've expanded the magazine a little bit um and and you know in what we're doing and how we're doing it um and changing what worked didn't seem to make sense for us um so other than you know bringing some things up to speed with some more of the current models scott was a very big fan of working in some of the older stuff that seemed to be where he liked to settle um so we brought more to the table to the new stuff and kept designing to the new um we still can reach back into the archives and make some of that older stuff but it doesn't seem to be where the the bulk of our orders come from now it's all the new iron that guys come out to us for Right on. That's yeah. good. And the triple points, are, your carbides are, are a really popular seller, uh, Clark, eh? Yeah, they, they, they really are. Um, you know, the, the good and ugly line seems to attract um, guys with the, the era of sleds that are just about ready to phase out or become, you know, backyard warriors. Um, any of the guys that are riding new iron, they get onto us pretty quickly for those triple points. Um, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. especially the big gun sleds, you know, your eight fifties and beyond um, guys want that, that triple point. Yeah. I'm looking forward yeah. to trying them this year. I know everyone that has them swears by them. So looking forward to it. So be great. Yeah, we have a pretty good following. It's uh, when we first started, um, you know, this kind of started as just an idea um, that my brother and I had um, working with Scott and it flourished into this great big giant, uh, conglomerate now um, we we really tried to work with guys one to one and a lot of those guys that came to us you know out of the blue when no one really knew what Bertram Skaggs was or triple point carbides at all up here in Canada are still some of the same faces we see now um, even guys that have gotten out of snowmobiling will still drop us some emails and some calls just to see how things are going so we've really got some really nice long-term relationships which is great that's awesome. That's awesome. There's a question here, uh, Clark, if you can answer uh, from Dave Miller. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Gary pulled her up. Go ahead. Read it. Float it out there, Rich. Yeah. Hoping you can clarify the rubber replacements versus shims for the pilot X skis and actually for everyone else too. Certainly. So when our, when our friends at BRP uh, redesigned that ski, um, some of the back of that plastic saddle that used to exist that allowed us to work with holding our shim kits in there um, is not there any longer. So we have no way to hold those components that we make inside that ski. So what we did is we took um, our design of the shims and all of the geometry and, and, th and the thought process into making those and re reverse engineered it into the, the rubber dampener itself. So we just encompassed it right in there and that allows us to integrate that into that ski saddle and we don't have to worry about those components popping out the back anymore. And they'll fit for both the Pilot and the Pilot X. Um, most of the guys that are riding the pilot ski after about 3000 kilometers were replaced with those uh, rubber dampeners because it starts to break down and it's just easier for them to replace it. But the pilot X doesn't have a choice, unfortunately, if they want to shim. All right. On. Good. Now, David, this might be getting way ahead uh, as far as contact goes, but David Barker said the Canadian address is not on the website. So the, we just ship, from up here so we have we don't do a storefront up here um so it's really just a p.o box that's up here um, we have certain warehouses that we ship from direct and we do have some dealers that we work with up here in ontario and and, and across canada so um we do work as you heard a couple weeks ago we do work with john sherrard at accelerated technologies uh he's been a great uh, addition to the triple point family for sure with his knowledge and what he has for setting machines up and what we can do with steering is is a great marriage obviously um we work with uh, the team out at country corners articat um they were probably one of the first dealers in canada to get on and work with us as well um, and they have a great great knowledge in the product and how to work it um, and how to and how to get it out to the customers. And we work with uh, some smaller shops across Ontario. So anybody who 
reaches out to us that's in more of an urgent need, we try to look at where we might have them closer as opposed to shipping direct. And we'll, we're glad to refer people to them if we need to. And then new to us this year um, out in the East Coast is we're working with Green Diamond Power Sports um, and on most of their locations as well. And those guys have been uh, really eager to get on with this last couple of years. So we shipped out a lot to them this year. Nice. Right on. Right on. It's good to know. Good to know. Well, we're going to look at some uh, some product shots and things like that that you brought along with us. So you want to have a look at some fan photos with us? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, let's get her done. Fan photos are brought to you by Fast Track Snowmobile Traction Products. Check out FastTrack.co. All right. Why didn't I go big there? There we go. <laughs> right on. Oh, so Dan Brinley, he he sent us some stuff here. He says, uh, this is a few pics of the 2016 Cross Tour 7000. He says it's heavy, but he loves the range with a 15-gallon fuel capacity location. Uh, oh, and he says the locations of these photos in order. Now, here's a, here's a test for you guys in the chat. He sent me five photos, but only three came through. Um, so we've got Hensel, Palmerston, Paisley, Holmesville <laughs> slash Clinton is one photo and Strathroy. So if you guys recognize any of these shots, you let us know. Okay. That could be anywhere. I don't know. This one might be easier to spot the pines. Nice sled. Yeah. It's a great sled. Big fuel tank, man. Sardine shores. Yeah, that is big. We were just talking about that today, Rich, about fuel yep. tank sizes and stuff. Yep. And they keep getting yeah. smaller and smaller. Yeah, there's Palmerston. Oh, so it's easy to right. figure out where you're shooting these, but <laughs> that's cool. And then we've got the Michigan. Outlaws. Yeah. So they sent in. I don't know where they sent any stories in. Hold up. I didn't record them if they did. But uh, he, they apologize. I know that for sure for not sending winter pictures, but he says it snow's coming. So this must be them prepping for winter. And look at Cam's hat, the cowboy hat. Isn't that awesome? And then I they got their beast. Giving us some loving. Ah, oh, got to clean some house here. Hold on a second. That's a good one, Tony. Thank you, man. Yeah, man. Hold it. Where did my website go? We're getting real close. Rich can attest to it, too. <laughs> he says, make it up for missing the first several episodes this season. Cheers, boys. Thanks for the content. Keep it coming. You keep coming, too, man. This is great. Good to see you back in the chat and helping us out here with some love. So that's cool. So look at the Michigan Outlaws lineup. They must have had the sled cleaning day here. You know? <laughs> There's this free ride. The new free ride's nice. Yeah, not nice. Yeah. yeah. So got them all there. Good, good selection of sleds. And then I wish I knew what this was, but it looks like they're getting some snow, doesn't it? Oh yeah. Oh, nice suburban. Did not sexy. Love it. Oh yeah. It's a beast. Here's another shot of it too. Sweet. Yeah, Same size fuel tank as the cross track. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh, I wouldn't do. I wouldn't doubt. And then Scott Terry, he sent this and it is, hang on, I got to find the notes on this. If we're going to do this right. Hold on. People sending in pictures like crazy now. Yeah, it's not saying. But where were they before noon? I'm telling you. Actually, I didn't have very many at all. And then, uh, and then, uh, I had the one photo and then another one came in and then Michigan Outlaws and I sent them back a big thank you because we didn't have anything. So Michigan Outlaws says the first picture of the sleds was taken before Thanksgiving. We had no snow. Then they took a trip up north to the UP for Thanksgiving. They actually had snow there. And the second picture is from trail riding at the Drummond Island. And the third picture is at the Taquaman Falls. Shouldn't be too much longer until we break the new sleds in for a ride. So... 
Yeah, so they uh, they were in the UP where they had the snow. And this is Scott Terry, and he says the mill the Millinocken the Millinocket Maine Twilight. Isn't that nice? Yeah, sweet. Look at the mountains in the background. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. That is dynamite. I'm telling you. And uh, Mike Eisenberg sent some love for you there, uh, Clark. He says, this is an awesome show. I have a great story about Clark. He's such a good guy. He actually left me a set of carbides at a local Esso station last year when we started our Quebec trip in Temascoming. Great dude. Goes above and beyond for his customers, and they're hands down the best carbides. We'll see you tonight, he says. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, I remember that. <clears throat> I was on that trip with them. That was good. That's awesome. All yeah, the customer we, service, uh, Clark. <laughs> we were all racing the the uh, the curfew, and uh, we all had to be at, in, in our bedtimes uh, long before <laughs> we all wanted to be. So we couldn't cross paths before we we're going to get in trouble. So we, I know the folks up there quite well, so we were able to stash them at the gas station and. We were, I think we were leaving town as you guys were coming into town. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. It was good. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. awesome. Man. He saw the whole time I heard him on the communicator. These carbides are unreal. <laughs> so he sold everybody, man, after he put them on the sled. So looking forward to that's them great. I did. This I isn't to Mike today as well. So, All right. oh, that's sweet. That's sweet. This is, uh, this isn't Mike. This is, uh, Ty Weiss, he says, uh, hey, Gary, I added some underlight hooding to my 2008 Mach 1000. It can change from white to red with the flick of a switch. Isn't that cool? No, that's wicked. Yeah. The Mach 1000. Great sled, but you have to service them like crazy, man. Or they could, yeah, uh, they could be problems. And then the next ones... Boom. Bergstrom Skeggs triple point carbides. Nice. Look at that. That's how you inspect them right there. <laughs> yeah, that's a corporate carbide check right there. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. Very cool. What's that sled that it's that it's on there? Looks like that's a Canuck Power Sports. That's, actually, that's our that's our friend Ryan Hawkins from uh Canuck Power yep. Sports that's uh that had had that done for us. So he's a great uh, advocate for us and helps us out with some of the social media stuff. And he's been our customer and, and, and well, we, we grew up minutes away from each other, but you know, it's kind of turned into a whole other relationship, but we've been working with each other for quite some time now. Great guy. Yeah. He's great. We got to get him on Gary. I rode with him up in Cochrane last year. He's a oh, great yeah, guy. Right on. Yeah. Right on. And he, on. he spends yeah. a lot of time uh, chirping my brother, which is great for just having around the <laughs> shop. The two of them just battle it out all the time. It's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool that's cool is he in the chat at all yep he was I here yep. a little earlier yeah here. yeah okay still here oh wait a minute here tell him to hit me up at fan photo at uh at, at mudbrats.com and uh and keep next monday night open <laughs> yeah no he, he'd be a good guest yeah <laughs> okay hold on i gotta get this back okay This turn, see all the people that said they don't see enough Arctic Cat content on this show. That's three tonight. <laughs> we're we're paying them back now. Tonight is yeah. the night. So Clark, you're not a, you're not only bestowing wisdom of the best carbides in the world. You're actually providing some good quality Arctic Cat content for our fans. <laughs> Yeah, we have a few cat photos. You know, our the group, our regular riding group is uh, is very diverse. So there's there's a family of Polaris, and we have some Skidoo guys, and um, we have some Articat guys. So you know, there's there's lots of room um, for chatter. Uh, we did have some Yamaha guys, but those have kind of faded off over the years. Um, there's a couple of new Ryan still has his uh, his winder, and we have a couple of new SRXs coming in um, from guys making some changes. But yeah, it's a good group, lots of different things to try, and it helps us, you know, test different things with different riders and. You know, it makes life a lot simpler. Can't all ride the same thing. We'd have nothing to talk about. Oh, absolutely. Right. Yeah. That's the very truth. Now, is do you still own that one or is that the one that you sold to uh, to my buddy? No, I still have that one. You still have that one? Because you I did sell one to, to our friend here in town, right? I did, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. Now he's on a do, so I don't know what that means. <laughs> He's spreading the love. Uh, he's, <laughs> he needed a change and wanted something different. And you know what? He, he didn't ride a lot. So he needed something uh, a little bit more trail friendly, I think. And, you know, his nice. time is limited. So you need a change. 
Yeah, that's true too. Yeah, for sure. So and he's getting old. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I won't tell him you said that. He might be actually in the chat. Hopefully he is. But hey, listen, uh, we're you've got a few show pictures. Is there stories and locations here of uh of this almost looks like Toronto. That's Toronto. Yep. That was one of the yeah. first shows I think we, we brought up there. Um, those are Scott's, um, those are Scott's uh, chairs there. Those old wooden ones. I think they're older than me and my brother combined. So I think that was one of the <laughs> earlier shows. Yeah. That's awesome. Oh, I got some housekeeping to do. Greg says, Oh shit. Sorry. We missed something back there. Did I? Oh yeah. Oh, it's Damn. Okay. I was we... busy typing. Thanks a lot, Brad Hitchcock. That's awesome. Appreciate that. That's awesome. <laughs> we don't forget. I I seen it. I caught it in my eye, but I just didn't get a get a break. Didn't get a break. I'm trying not to cut people off anymore. It's my New Year's res resolution. You know. So no, it's cool. Good good looking setup there. Yeah. And then this is is this the same? Yeah, this is the same picture, same but picture. cropped differently. Okay. Look at this. Look at this pose. Ooh, nice. Yeah. Look at that. So that was at a very frosty Abitibi. Abitibi, yep. That was awesome right up there say, last year. I've never been, but I recognize that location for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. That ever Great high place. up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, I've been there a few times. Um, it's one way up is real short and the other one's a little less than short, but it's, it's, <laughs> it's a quick ride up and back down. Now on the Arctic cat, can you make it on one tank of gas or do you have to, do you have to fuel up when you're up there or, or I've done it both ways. I've stretched it and done it. Um, but you know what, those guys are up there all winter long. So, you know, they're, they're there for the guys who can't make it. So you try to support them as best you can up there. Um, I'm sure it leads for a long winter and, we all yeah. know that it's not easy to get up there or get back. So if you don't, you know, buy a couple bucks in fuel and support them, then the one time you need them, they won't be there. So we try to look yeah. after those guys when we're up there. Yeah, for sure. Hey, man. Hey, man, I hear you. And That's where's beautiful. this picture? It's nice view. Is this... It that's in... That's north of St. Raymond um, on our way up to uh, Mont Valin. There, oh, nice. There's a look out there that one of the local guys we bumped into, and he said, you know, we told him that we were just kind of new to the area, and he took us to all sorts of amazing lookouts, and this was one of them. It was great. Yeah, it's unbelievable. I love it. You see forever. I think you can see my house way back there in the distance. <laughs> <laughs> who's this? Who's this cutie? That's my daughter, Lila. So that's the next generation triple point rider right there. So nice. Yeah, <laughs> she's yeah, she's coming young. up to the ranks. She's a, she's on a 120 now, so the nice. next fleet of sleds are all ready to go. So there's a 250 in the garage waiting, and I think it'll be a while before she touches any of mine. Hopefully, she goes down a different road. <laughs> <laughs> now, That's now, awesome. do you, do you make do you make triple points for for the 120s and the smaller sleds? So for the smaller guys that come to us, like we'll we'll do the good and ugly lineup for them. Um, and we do a lot for the guys that um, want to race the little ones because um, they got to stick within certain parameters of single cutting surfaces. So we do make them. There's a couple variants in the skis that the smaller machines come with. So we try to get a little bit more in depth with um, how we make them. So my, my brother normally specs those out with some pictures and some measurements, and then it allows us to tailor more to order for those guys. And we do get into those for all the smaller size sleds. All right. On. It's good to know. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Why not? Right. Get them yeah, using sure. the product young. <laughs> right? Yeah, we get them sold on the younger ones, and then we'll move them up to those triple points when they get older. Yeah, I've got yeah, another one here, Gary. I Thanks. see that. Jeez, I, I only need one sound effect tonight. That's great. And he sounds a super sticker. Yeah. Thank you, Jason Seamer. That's awesome. That's a fairly new name to the group, too. I don't... Don't yeah. know whether I recognize that one or not. That's awesome, man. Thanks. I, I like, yeah, that's cool. I like the sticker too. It's an old car. Dodge. Love it. Oh, no, it's got goal on it. I'm looking at the wrong screen. You, everyone <laughs> in the chat can see he's got the goal. Love it. People post that when they like the, the one they like the guest. Clark, they'll give us a goal. 
But uh, here's some product shots. I'm gonna, I've interspersed some product with writing and everything in between. So I'm blocking it here. So that's our good and ugly carbides. Um, so that was kind of where the company started on. So that's our single cut carbide. Still comes with ski savers and and a shim kit as a package, but that's one of our. That's the original product that got the wheels rolling. Right on. Now, what's different about that as opposed to, you know, a traditional carbide that you think of or something a dealer would install? So we. We do ours a little bit differently. Um, we, all of our bars that we make um, are made with a little bit more of a robust bar. We work on a single host bar as opposed to multiple keeled. Um, and then we do not use segmented carbide. So we're all one piece carbide. So that kind of sets us apart from some of the other guys out there doing the carbide thing. But um, that's some of the obvious stuff. Nice. Yeah, you can see it's one piece. That's nice. A lot less to break off, right? And what about the diameter of the rod? Is it different on those or or is it uh, they all kind of standard? Uh, no, everyone that's in the business has their own idea of a host bar. Um, mm -hmm. Some of the guys, you know, use square bars. Some guys use two, like dual bars. Some guys use round bars. So we use a round host bar um, and it's a certain size that works for us and how we prep the bar. Um, it's a little bit chunkier than some of the other guys out there, but that's part of our deal and how we design things. Nice. Nice. I just muted you there. Your mic was picking up the uh, plastic water bottle there, Rich. Oh, no, sorry. It was the bag with the shims in it. Sorry. Oh, it was in the bag? Oh, okay. Do you, do you want to no, uh, show those now? That's okay. We'll, we'll get to it because Clark's probably okay. got some too, right? Yeah. yeah, we got some pictures of shims and yeah. stuff. And yeah. Troy Park said the good and ugly ones would be good for guys that ride from home and have to ride road to get to the trails to start. Wear out bars fast like that, he says. Yep, it's true. And a, and a lot of our guys that are in the, in the BRP world run our good and ugly line on the outside and the triple points on the inside. So, you know, some of those guys do that or the, the, the tuner ski guys run good and uglies on the out and the triples on the inside as well. Yeah. 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 Corey, nice. Corey was asking about the triple points and we're, we're going to get to that when we see the picture, cause there's a picture coming up of, of a triple point, but he mentioned that to me at the show. Um, so I know what he's thinking. So I'll ask the, I'll ask you that when we get to that question. So okay. how, how important do you think the suspension setup is and, and the, and the, uh, the Bergstrom skegs, like when you get into the, um, when you get into the, I was just looking at my green screens, killing the, <laughs> killing the blue sky on the photo. <laughs> but when you get into adding, adding the, the triple point carbides, is there much suspension tuning to do from there? Do you find that it's, or do you find that you put them on and it, and it, they're ready to rock out of the box? Well, everybody has their own idea of what an ideal suspension is and, you know, where you ride, how you ride and what you ride all play merit to that. You know, you have a group of guys that, you know, they want a little bit more elusive a front end. You got other guys who want that, you know, dug right in there and holding on tight. And then you have, you know, your other guys that like this, that light floaty feel and would prefer nothing touch the ground. So it's kind of a subjective question to, for me to answer. Um, we try to figure out what they're riding and how they intend to ride it. And that allows us to tailor into what we should be giving them for a carbide. And anybody who struggles with what they're doing for setup um, that we can't give them the entry level answer to, then we send those guys off to John Sherrard at Accelerated Technologies. And, you know, he dials them into exactly what it is that they're looking to achieve, which, you know, you guys covered on the other show. But, you know, he goes a little bit further into the suspension setup than what we're prepared to do. Um, but, you know, we've, we've, we've learned quite a bit from John as well and, and, and helping guys with some of the entry level things as to whether we should refer to him or, you know, in some cases it goes the other way. Um, they've already got the suspension set up that they want and now they're looking for the handling. Um, and, they, you know, they, they come to us after that. So, it's, you know, it's a, good, uh, it's a good marriage, like I said earlier, for both of us. So yeah, yeah, probably yeah. not a bad idea, Clark, if I'm changing my skis and also um, using the rubber uh, shims, to probably go see John after, right? Because that's going to change drastically, I would think, right? Yeah, I mean, 
I, absolutely. I mean, a lot of guys change skis because um, they're looking to achieve something different than what they were getting from their stock skis. Um, mm-hmm. You know, there's the guys that head to the CNA world. You got the curve guys. You've got a lot of aftermarket skis that guys can go and work in um, by all means. And they're all looking to achieve something different, whether it be for trail or off trail or a little bit of both. If you're looking to get the best handling um, suspension wise and keep things planted and stuck to the trail, then by all means, John will will get you to there. And then we provide the bite to get you around those corners yeah. that the yeah. suspension gets you there. Cause I'm going to go to the gripper skis with your, um, uh, stoppers and then the, uh, the six inch, uh, triple points. So I'm going to see how the, that works out. Yeah. And a lot of guys are, are moving from that pro steer to the gripper. Um, you know, yeah. it seems to be, yeah. a, a, it's a transition we're noticing. So, you know, that was a fairly new ski and it's becoming a lot more popular each year. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be my setup this year. I'm going to try it out. Apparently, it works really well. Yeah, that's wild. Oh, I, I got ahead of myself there. Where were we? <laughs> oh, right there. <laughs> nice. That looks like it's heading up to the Abitibi, or it could be Quebec. Yeah, that's Quebec. That's closer to Lasar, yeah. actually. Um, yeah, yeah, I was just going to say, yeah. So, yeah. Nice one flat and wide. You guys are... I don't think they came on that one. So that's kind of the shakeup of our group. It's kind of worked out to be even numbers between Polaris and Skidoo and Cat. And like I said, we still have a few Yamaha guys that uh, that are part of the group, like of our, you know, our weekend riders that we're out every week with. So we have a lot of chance to play with all the different OEMs to set things up without having to borrow sleds to do it. It's nice. Yeah, it is nice. It's the same couple of groups that I have too. The same thing. It's a good mixture of Cat and uh, Yamaha and Skidoo and Polaris. It's good. Yeah, so the ribbon goes all around, right? The the the, the trash talk. Oh yeah, everyone oh, yeah. shows up on Thursday night with friends, and then you leave on Sunday, and you don't talk to each other for a whole week. It's great. <laughs> it's true. No, this is a this is a huge group. Is this an event? Uh, no, that is one group that I took to Quebec that started off with four guys, and I think we ended up with about twenty six or twenty eight sleds, and. It was a ton of fun, but I don't know that I'll ever do it again. Um, yeah. It took forever to try and get places. Um, so this was probably the, one of the only pictures where everyone was still in one spot. And, you know, you know yourself when you ride, there's always that risk of problems. Well, that multiplies by the amount of sleds. And it, you know, we had a lot of fun, but it was a big group. Yeah. Yeah. You want to all make sure you have something reliable to ride on that fear. Uh, if you're running that big, right? That picture was a lot smaller on Sunday. Not everything made it back that went there. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a big group, man. Yeah. Uh, Michael Milner has a question. He says, how far back do you support with the triple point and rubber dampeners? So the rubbers are going to be more for the modern day stuff. So we can do pilots, the, you know, the pro cross ski, um, the, the pro steer skis, the pilot X's, we're probably not going to go back any older than those to make uh, those rubber dampeners. Um, but we'll shim them back as long as you would like to go back to. Um, that's no problem. The triple points and the good and uglies um, will go back within reason. We have some guys, uh, you know, Peterborough that tried to just go all the way back to the seventies from some of the old stuff out in the swap meet. And we, you know, we're not prepared to go back that far, <laughs> but in some cases we still have some stuff, you know, if we still have the dies and, you know, and as long as everyone's patient, we'll, we'll, we'll get out there and make them for you if we can. Wow. We don't How's stock the old stuff anymore, but we'll make it. Nice. And you make, you make for pilot TS skis as well, correct? We do just a shim kit for that. We don't make the bars <clears throat> for it. Okay. We'll yeah. talk about that because that's what I that's what I've got on my sled that's coming. Oh yeah. So yeah. And and I have another question. I'm asking for a friend here. Where is it? Asking for a friend though, but should you replace your carbides before they, they get this worn out? <laughs> Uh, you know, I mean, you probably got at least another half a weekend left in those, according to some of our guys. <laughs> US, but, well, um, yeah. <laughs> this is off of my sun sled. This is off my sun sled. And uh, when I had my 800, I would just run it right down. So it got right, right worn to, to, here we go. Where are we here? 
to here. Like, so there's just that weld left. Yeah. And then you're into the ski though, Gary, after that, then you're going to start replacing (laughs) skis. (laughs) I went to sharp. I went to sharpen my skis one time, my carbides Clark and, uh, with the bite harder tool and I flipped up the ski and there was just the two studs. There was nothing else. <laughs> I've seen that guys, before. Most of the guys that normally call us on Friday night and you know, they're on their way for their weekend ride that they only get one weekend away to do it. And that's what they find. And it's like, exactly where can we pick these up at 11 o'clock at night on our way to the cottage? At an ESO station, I take it. Is that where yeah. they pick up? You know what? We've got, we've got pretty creative over the years. We've, you know, we've stashed these things in barbecues. We've, you know, we've left them in snowmobile trailers, gas stations, hotels. There's, we've got real, we've got real creative. That's, That's awesome. Cool. I love it though. We're looking at some good scratching going on here. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that the purpose of that photo? Yeah, so we were, you know, we like to try and see exactly what it looks like after, and it's it's funny we've we've had guys that you know get separated, um, that have gone out to the intersection and, and looked for the triple point marks in the snow, to see whether their buddies went left or right. Now, as we have become more popular uh, up here, that may not be as lucky, but at one point in time, that seemed to work. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> now when you're running a pilot x ski like i know that they 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 run them they come single carbide now would you still do the 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 uh the triple point in the middle and no outer or is it personal preference really because i know they they sell you with an executive carbide for the center and you move the stock you know standard carbide to the outer edge um do you really need to do that with a triple point so you know not, not, not really. Um, some, you know, some guys really get aggressive and want to roll off that center keel and they like that confidence knowing that that other bar is there to save them before they're into a squirrely situation. So, I mean, for, you know, the guys that flat out come at you and say, you know, we like to ride hard. We're looking for maximum everything everywhere. Um, some guys will just take their stock bar and move it over until that wears out. Um, or they come right to us from the very beginning and get that good and ugly bar for the outside. And, you know, some of them want that extra ski saver for the outside as well. Yeah. The, the, the longevity on the, uh, the triple points are pretty wild. Uh, Clark seeing a lot of guys that are posting that they're getting well over 4,000 kilometers out of them. That, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. So we depend and you know, where you ride obviously plays a little bit of merit to that. Um, mm-hmm. One of our uh, long-term customers and is actually a neighbor of mine. Uh, he's a very big high miler. He goes um, out to New Brunswick like three or four times a year and, and rides back. That's his thing. He'd get trailers out and then just drives home. Um, and he's, you know, he's seen over 10,000 K on them. Um, we've seen, that's I think awesome. that's probably, you know, on the higher end of the spectrum. We have uh, another couple of friends of ours uh, of, of clay mine in Port Perry that, you know, have seen over 10,000, but they're, you know, they're up North riders. So they're not seeing a lot down down here but you know your average amount of kilometers that you should see on this thing is somewhere between seven and eight thousand k um you know be it that it's you know trail ridden properly and you're not you mm-hmm. know road warrior and all the time but yeah, yeah. i mean we, we yeah. get a lot longer wear i think than most of the other bars you can buy that's awesome that's good looking yeah. forward to them that was your videos that actually dragged them on bare pavement though wasn't it <laughs> Yeah, we've got some videos of beating these things up. I mean, we we make our own and deliberately try to kill them. Um, we want to know exactly what the parameters are. And then, you know, we want to see what some of the other guys are doing as well. Um, some of those videos are pretty old and some of them are a little bit newer. And we we try to beat up all of this stuff. I mean, we, we do a, a lot of testing and, you know, here, go wreck it type philosophy and see what you come back with. So that's how you make it better, though, right? Yeah. or know how it's performing at, at any rate. Yeah, we get guys to, you know, we get some pretty extensive testing with our um, trail grabber products as well. Um, guys put them in rubber track skid steers and use them for snow removal. And we have them in some of the groomers in Ontario. We've got them on a lot of different types of material uh, and, and machines. So, you know, guys are going to go out and do three st- 360s on asphalt um, and they seem to live. So we know they're going to perform okay on the snowmobile for the whole course of the season. Wow, that's crazy. What are we looking at here? This looks like fun. <laughs> yeah, slightly less than fun. Um, I think it was about <laughs> minus 40 in Rouen. 
Um, somebody showed up with a brand new sled and, uh, you know, this is, this is what happens, right? Uh, you know, the day comes to a halt when you're in there and you're, and you're doing plugs on a new one. It's not great, but that's how it goes. <laughs> I must have been the same time around when we were up there, Clark, because that was freezing, man. Uh, it was actually, yeah, and it, it was, was yeah. you know, it was a great weekend. It was a new sled, uh, new trailer that had a heater. The heater didn't work. There was a generator to use the backup heater. The generator wouldn't start because it was too cold. The sled wouldn't start, so it was just a great big gravy train of all sorts of stuff that didn't work. Um, it was amazing, and you know the weather was so nice. You could pick up a ratchet just by touching it, and it would freeze to your hand. It was it was great. Yeah, it was cold, man. Sleds ran nice, though, but that was a cold five days. But it was awesome. Great, great yes, time. Yes, it was very cold. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. It's uh, it, it makes your two-stroke run good. Oh, yeah. That's for sure. Good fun. Here we go. Well, there we that's go. That's a side profile of the triple points. Right on. That is cool. And then, so Corey was wondering what the purpose of the the, the outer points are on here. Well, why is there three of them? So the most of the OEM sleds, be it that you keep your skis on the ground, and I understand that not everyone likes to do that, but, you know, skis are meant to be on the ground for handling. You'll have somewhere between, you know, 12 and 14 degrees of a roll on those skis when you come into a corner. We look, try and run with six cutting surfaces in a straight line. And then when you come into that corner and you roll off that center point, not rolling right over where you're lifting a ski, but you should have four cutting surfaces. Obviously, there'll be two on the outside and two on the inside. So it's giving you more bite in those corners. And then by some of the other components that we incorporate with the product, we're giving you the full presentation of the carbide to the snow. Yeah. Nice. So it does, it does factor in the rolling effort. Um, that, that comes into play with the suspension. I mean, there's a lot of moving parts there, right? So you can just yeah, imagine. Sure. Yeah. Now, yeah. Corey also followed up his question. Can you sharpen these two with the, uh, the bite harder? Like they're just like any other carbide? Clark, I so imagine. The bite I harder, yeah, the bite harder tool works okay for our uh, good and ugly line. Um, okay. It doesn't work so well with the triple point. Um, okay. What we recommend is that you take a, like a welder's green wheel or some other grinding stone and you can, take down the center carbide uh, just ever so slightly, therefore okay. allowing the two outside carbides to be slightly more, you know, mm -hmm. slightly sharper uh, on that inside edge. But otherwise um, with that type of mileage out of them, um, yeah, I was you're, say. You're, you're not, you're not really sharpening them as, as frequently as some of the other stuff that you can get. Right on. I, I think the key is that they're a single piece too, where that's the problem I, I find with all the, the traditional stock ones with the multi-piece carbide is they break off. They'll catch mm -hmm. something and they'll break off. So, and you'll notice that too, when you're sharpening them, it's, they don't all sharpen up evenly. So I think even if you ran up again, you probably wouldn't have to sharpen them by the time that comes with these ones, you'd probably just throw them out, replace exactly. them. But I, I think if you ran a file down the, the in those two V's, you, you'd probably be able to clean them up a bit. That's for sure. Yeah. yeah. A good point, though. That's what everyone was saying. You won't need to sharpen yeah. these. They last forever, right? And by the time they're ready to give up the ghost, you need a new set anyway. Yeah. So you're getting, you know, plus of 5,000 yeah. kilometers out of them. They don't owe you anything, man, in my opinion. Yeah, I know. I know, Angelo. A lot of guys are done with the ball. sled before they're done with the bar. Yeah, good point. <laughs> it's a good hey, point. Hey, challenge, challenge accepted. We'll throw them on Roscoe and we'll see how Drew makes out with them this year. <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. So. Yeah, I'm looking forward to trying them. Everyone that has them swears by them, man. So I can't wait. Good. Yeah, they're they're going to be worth more than Roscoe though if I throw them on Roscoe. Well, the value will go up by another two grand. <laughs> what, there what you is, go, Gary. <laughs> yeah. What is the retail? What is the price? Uh, we're talking Canada or U.S. dollars for? So let's start with the good and ugly, moving up to the the triple points. So we range in the good and uglies based on the size. Um, you know, we, we try to stay under that hundred and, you know, $160 range uh, on the good and ugly components. You know, each of the packages that you get from us will come with both the bars, uh, the ski savers and the shim kit. So it comes as a full package. Um, so all of those components come with the orders. Uh, the triple points, um, we, you know, we have to account for some of that U.S. dollar stuff. So up here, we're just under three hundred dollars uh, for the eight inch, and uh, just under that two eighty mark uh, for the six inch now. 
And again, that comes yeah. as a full yeah. package. And if guys wish to go to the rubber dampeners, then you know, obviously that's an added expense. And, you know, unfortunate for the guys, the, the pilot X, they, they don't have a choice if they want to shim. Um, but that's what we do to shim those. Right and on. that's what we're looking at right now. That's correct. Yeah. So yeah, we, nice. we make them for the, the HPS, which is the pro steer ski, which is right above your head there. And then we have two different versions for the BRP, which is the two stroke and the four stroke. Yeah. Nice. Now, now, like everyone else happening in the world, Clark, how is your stock on everything? Like are you, you got stock for pretty much everything or are so you low last, on some stuff? Last, well, we're, 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 we're slow. Um, so last year um, was not a great year for anyone. Um, and mm -hmm. as much yeah. as everyone likes to say things are back to normal, they're really not. The supply chains are just not back to where they should be for some of the raw materials. Although we kind of knew that was coming and we overcompensated in a lot of areas. We're still getting surprised on some of the smaller areas, like some fastener struggles or some, you know, some plastic struggles and things like that, or some of the tools that we need to do the job that just inherently the wear out with more fabrication. We seem to struggle getting that type of thing. Um, but the time to move things uh, from the U.S. up to Canada seems to be where the biggest challenge comes in. Um, the whole world decided to buy online overnight. So inheritedly, the, the, the struggles come with that in trying to get product to move. Um, the, the usual process for us is that when the snow kind of melts, um, most guys stop thinking carbides and they move on to whatever summer toy that is they do. This year was very different. Um, we had a lot of proactive guys that were saying, you know what, we know that we have struggles. Uh, we know there's supply chain issues. So we never really seen that dip in um, interest. It, it carried on all throughout the summer. Um, very nice for us. It was great. Um, but it took a lot of pressure off of the, the snow check rush that would essentially come from us this time of year. A lot of guys come to the table early. So we're doing the best oh, we can to get everyone too. looked after. But yeah, there is still some, um, there's still some slow you know, still rolling in slower than we'd like, but we're, our hopes is to get everyone looked after um, before Christmas or before we get too far into it. And you know what, I got to say, most of our customers have been very understanding, very proactive, you know, just get them to us when you can. And, and that takes, it makes life a lot simpler for us. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. I better get mine ordered then. <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's good that you're upfront about that too, because uh, yeah. well, it's, I know when the LA it's an issue for everybody, right? It's been an issue for everyone. Like no one's gotten away from having the issues of the supply chain. So no yeah. and as much as everyone's frustrated about not getting snow checks, that's kind of played to a bit of our advantage primarily because um, guys are gun shy and wanting to buy products um, if they don't have a sled, which we totally understand. And they're coming in as slowly uh, as, you know, as what we can service them anyway. So it's kind of working out to everyone's advantage. Yep. Yeah. Sled 519 said he just ordered in a set. He's looking forward to see if they live up to the hype. Nice. I don't think it's hype. I think it's proven trial on these things. Pull up Tony Katz's question there, Gary. Can you see him there? Yeah. How do the triple do with the aggressive ski like curve and CNA too much bite? You can pull that Where about so that? can you read that read that out again, Rich? How do the triple do with a more aggressive ski like curve and cna too much bite so we have uh, ryan hawkins from canuck power sports would be a great uh, testament to that um ryan's always been a cna guy um i don't think we've ever sold him a set of bars for anything else and we have a great deal um of followers in the cna and curve so they are a more aggressive ski um the the guys like ryan that are um aggressive and drive big sleds they still go to the eight inch package for that but i would say the bulk of the more aggressive ski buyers are using the six inch carbides mm -hmm. for that yeah all right perfect i got i asked ryan there to answer too he'll he'll, he'll chime in here i'm sure oh right on perfect yeah. perfect yeah. Well, that's cool another trade show this is toronto again too isn't it underneath that um, vestibule thing Bulkhead. Yeah, and that's where we, you know, that's the first, I think probably the first or second time that we started having uh, Canuck Power Sports as a guest with us in the booth and help him promote that big ride that Ryan puts on up there um, in Cochrane, which is which is a great mm -hmm. event. Yeah, it was great. It was a good time last year, even with all the crap going on. We had a good time. Yeah, my brother Clay uh, made it up there for that. I, I, I couldn't get up there for those, but um, we try to make sure somebody's up there. Yeah. Looking forward to that again this year. Should be good fun. 
big big ride right <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Right uh, sled 519 says maybe a dumb question but what is a dot 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 skag <laughs> Well, that's, that's the one we always get asked, right? So, you know, that's the American terminology for a carbine. Yeah. Does it does it come from the boating world? Do you know where it originates from? Yeah, maybe, I guess. I mean, they're, I, in all honesty, I don't see it commonly applied to anything else other than our stuff. But that's, you know, that's what everyone knows us as. And that's what the original owner referred to it as. So we just kind of carried it on. Yeah, because yeah, I think that was the name that came up, Gary, when they originally started putting them on the old, old sleds. They were called skags, yeah, not carbides. Skags. So I, yeah. I think that's where it, it came from. I think I'm pretty sure. but And that's what they call the little part of an outboard or any IO, mm -hmm. the little fin that sticks down below the prop is called a skeg. And I mean, it gives some directional ability. So I wonder if it came from that, right? Maybe, yeah. And, you know, originally they, there wasn't a carbide insert on those. It was just the the metal rod or just the, the metal bar. Yeah. And I think yeah. we all subsequently started calling them carbides when the carbide got added to it later on in, in manufacturing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there you go. You got the turning picture right there. Hopefully people can see on the left-hand side. It shows the straight running and it shows the carbide tip when you're turning. Yeah. Sloby grew up calling them skegs. Yeah. <laughs> so, protect your ski savers, protect your ski keels and reduce darting. Keel, another boating term. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then the uh, the carbide, the dome carbide chips wear new points and edges. So that what's that? A screw in stud for tires? Yeah. So we yeah. So we make a, a screw in product called Trail Grabbers, which we get we sell in a variety of different lengths for different types of tracks, and we sell those for all the the snowmobile lineup that's out there, um, ATVs, dirt bikes, um, any of the rubber tracked UTVs, uh, any of those side by side equipments that's out there. We make them as small down to um, snowblower tires. Um, we sell these to some of the uh, the guys in the postal service in the U.S. who screw them in the bottom of their boots so they don't fall when they're delivering the mail. I mean, these things find themselves in a, in a variety of places for sure. That's insane. Yeah, I've heard of them, the trail grabbers. Yeah. I didn't know you're involved in that. That's pretty cool. Okay, Rich, you got uh, you see how fast you can name the location of this next picture. Okay, ready? <laughs> One, two. Oh, that's out. Uh, oh. It's in <laughs> Jesse's Quebec. Jesse's going to name it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what took a picture of their helmets that you wrapped uh, for them. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. I'm brutal, man, with names. Cool. But I did yeah. get the right building, and it's the same. Jess will, no, I Jess will you chime know. in here. <laughs> yeah, I know. They're they're yelling at the screen right now. <laughs> so. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that looks cold, Clark. For, oh, yeah, that's right. That's where we our dinner took six hours to get. And not knocking them. They were they were jammed. No. It literally yeah, so that weekend that you guys were there, all of the staff, I think, the kitchen staff left on the Thursday um, unexpectedly because it was a little bit later in the season. So the, apparently they're only busy for a short while and they don't yeah. normally have that type of um, traffic. And yeah. it was insanity there had to have been 400 snowmobiles in the parking lot and it was yeah. freezing cold yeah. and it was yeah. it wasn't their fault but it did take a long no. time to no not to at all eat. well uh, they also the night we were there to eat they also had a group uh and a, a private room of 20 so they were you know looking after those people i guess they had an event that was already booked and then they had all the snowmobilers too so but we got our food yeah well and and when a four stroke smokes like that you know it's cold all the condensation yeah. coming out of it. Yeah, yeah, it was cold, man. Forest style. Wow. I don't remember that. I should have remembered that. Oh well. Yeah. Oh, well, you know I what? I thought it was the, the two-stroke smoke blowing over onto mine. Actually, yeah, and that eight hundred <laughs> beside me there blowing over. It probably was yeah. right. Trails yeah. were amazing, though, man. That was a great four days, five days. It was awesome, man. That's yeah, cool. we. I think we sent you guys some uh, some trails to ride and and some loops yeah. to do and uh, some places to stay. And I don't know how much of that you guys use, but we put a lot of miles in up there. And yeah. I mean, you can ride up there all winter and not see the same trail. There's quite a bit to see. Yeah, yeah. I think, we put, I think, I think we put on fourteen hundred k that week. I'm I'm pretty sure it was just shy of fourteen hundred kilometers or fourteen hundred kilometers. It was great. Yeah, not nice not hard to do up there. No, no, for sure. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. And you never seen less than a hundred kilometers an hour on the, on the gauge, right? <laughs> 71. Yeah. Canuck power sports says 400 K 600 kilometer, 800 kilometer or a thousand kilometer loop in 24 hours. We'll be posting info for the great Northern expedition in the coming weeks. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's cool. Yeah, we got to have him on. Well, hopefully we'll get him on the next couple of weeks. He's a great guy, right? Yeah, well, actually, we got that opening next week. Um, okay, good. Well, I'll reach out yeah. to him. Okay, yeah, I think that the next weekend's taken. I'll, I'll confirm that, but reach out to him too and yeah. fine. But I, it's either, I, I'm pretty sure it's two weeks from now is booked. And then next week we had the, the reschedule. So right we'll on. figure it out. So, yeah. yeah. And Neil Owen, you are old. Don't kid yourself. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> actually he's he's doing it out east he's doing an east coast ride this year i may hop yeah on new brunswick him. yeah that's yeah. awesome yeah yeah he'd be fun to ride with man even even the oh, yeah. apre riding it would be mm. a hoot with neil yeah yeah so this looks like quebec as well i don't know why the color's coming out so horrendous on the on the screen here yeah it's weird eh? Your color, your but screen's messing up on it. Really green. It's a really blue sky, but could be the cat green shining through. <laughs> All the pictures are a little bit off in color, but I mean, it gets the point across, I guess. It does. Adds mood to them, you know? A little yeah. more ambiance yeah. for them. Exactly. Is this Quebec? Yeah, that's uh, probably close to Sanitaire, I would imagine, somewhere over in that direct neck of the woods. Mm. So we... You know, we get on those longer trails because it's it's easy for us to get some of the cameras mounted in places that we're trying to, you know, get the angle finders to work on and how it's being presented to the snow. So we, those ones seem to work well for what we're doing. And there's not a lot of traffic on them uh, when we ride. So we're not interrupting anyone while we're out there. So is that your cat, Clark? Yeah. 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 Right on. Are you still are you riding that again this year? I have that one and I have a few other options that I'm entertaining for the year. I haven't let that one go just yet, just in case, yeah. but smart. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A buddy of ours in here, uh, sometime is now he's uh, waiting on his, his new T cat with the, uh, EPS, the power steer. And so he's, he's getting excited about that. So, yeah, we haven't had a chance to see that just yet. We've, you know, we were, my brother and I were fortunate enough to be, um, down in the U.S. Um, a few weeks ago, and we had a chance to crawl over that lynx and crawl all over that mock, and you know we've seen some of the other stuff uh, slowly about, and some of the guys um, uh, bring us stuff to the to to the shop to look at and and, and play with early, but that's the only one we haven't crawled on just yet is that T cat, but the other stuff okay. we've seen. Right on, good. Should be good fun. Yeah, look at that. Nice. Look at that path. This one's curving too. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's neat. Like they're like moose tracks laying on the snow. You can see who's where your buddies went if they went left yeah. or right ahead of you. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. Yeah. It allows you to pick a different way if you don't like the guys you're with, I guess. It's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess you're not darting and hunting around with those on, are you? No, for sure. No. Sure, man. Yeah, it's awesome. This is a proverbial, uh, I got to make it look like I'm working shot. So that's my brother Clayton and he does a lot of our, um, uh, you know, our design work, um, and gets in there and takes these things apart. So that's actually up at, uh, accelerated technology. So, um, John sometimes gets his hands on some of these machines, um, even before we do, um, just because he's digging in there as well. So he gave us a call and said he had his hands on one of these. So we went up to work on that pilot X key, um, up there. So that's, that's my brother up there working on that one. I think that was last year when that, just before that ski came out to everyone to get. That's right. cool. Yeah. He showed us some, some stuff, some early playing around with that pilot X ski. It was kind of cool and playing in the bottom of it to get it them both even. And, and, uh, it was really neat. Yeah. That's wicked. Yeah. It's nice to have. How close are you to his shop? Is it closer? I'm about, it a, I'm about, a, I'm about an hour away from him, probably. Nice. So that's not too far. If you have to collaborate on something, you can work back and forth easy together. No, it'd be a lot faster if there wasn't so many lakes in the way. But by the time you drive around all the lakes that somebody put in our way, it's about an hour. 
Yeah. So in the winter time, yeah. you just take your sled as the, as yeah. the crow flies, so to speak. Yeah, it's he's not terribly far. Um, he's got a great spot. You know that in the, you know the shop's well laid out. So you know we've we've got some really good dealers that we work with. Um, all the guys are quick to get us the information we need, or if we need a ski or we need a sled. Um, all of our arteries um, are pretty good with that, and you know we work. Um, you know, we work with another guy, Scott Kendall, um, out in um, Spencerville area, and he's very pro Articat or a very pro Polaris guy. And he, there's some, you know, there's a big Articat following in that area, but he seems to be um, the Polaris guy out there. So he has a shop out there, and he gets things pretty early as well. So he's helped us out with getting things from there, and yeah. So we, you know, the guys that we work with are quite helpful. Nice. This a new cabinet for you, or what were you doing here? Uh, this was some pictures that we just took on the Peterborough show. Um, you know, people always talk about how there's pictures of our stuff and our booths, but we're never in it. So they made us take some pictures on the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> we both have faces made for radio, you know, not really TV. Yeah, so. yeah. Okay. Is, are, are you the younger brother or is, or, or is he younger than you? Well, I, you know, I'm going to go with your original answer because everyone says that, but I'm the older one. Are you really? Are you close in age? Like you almost look twins. I, he, you're probably not going to want to hear that, but <laughs> no, I'm uh, I'm three years older than Clay. Oh yeah, nice. Well, you you aged well, my friend. <laughs> so here late, we got late, the trail. Late snow checks and slow delivery chains will will age you a little bit faster, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I hear you. I hear you for sure. And you know what? And and now you got to deal with December courier uh, headaches. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. is the now, now we're moving into the, you know, the, the gas station drop offs and you know stash them in the barbecue lid and leave them <laughs> hanging on door handles and yeah we've we've got real creative. Now did you snow check a, a sled, Clark? I try to snow check a couple each year. Um, okay. And then figure out which one I'm going to take. Uh, last yeah. year I did not. Um, for no other reason other than I, you know, I, I was still happy with what I was riding, but we, I try to try, try and ride something quite different on a regular basis. Yeah. No. Now, Can you divulge what you're have... doing this year? Uh, yeah, I, I snow checked, uh, I snow checked a couple different ones. So I snow checked a new TCAT with the, with the power steering. Nice. And, um, I also, uh, I snow checked a, uh, 900R as well. I'm, uh, quite eager to try that one. So I think we'll see how that pans out for us. The, the mock version or the, the, the XRS. I went with just the X package. Um, I don't know that I'm a contender for the XRS. Um, I owned an RR once and I think when I sold it, there's 25% of the suspension that I'd never even, you know, bounced on before. Um, so I don't know that I'm the right contender for that. I'm a trail rider, right. And we're, and I'm not going to, beat these things up um so we i made a decision based on some friends referrals and some dealer advice that that's the road that i should have taken um i haven't taken anything as of yet but it will be one of those two machines i think right on. nice nice you can't I, go wrong having, either. having seen that mock a couple of weeks ago i'm regretting the fact that maybe i didn't order one of them the, the pictures aren't really doing the justice at which that machine shows up in real life i have to admit the the color mm -hmm. scheme doesn't look quite as accurate in the pictures as what it is in real life and it is a it's a pretty nice machine it's yeah, it's sure. just uh, it's amazing how different it looks in person and i think when you get that outside in the snow it's going to be even more incredible the, the z on the side is pretty cool yeah, it's, yeah, it's more of a pewtery, well. silvery kind of softer color. You know, the pictures kind of give you the impression it's more of like a like Gold. a saddle Gold. brown, earthy tone sort of color, and, mm -hmm. and it's certainly not. And it, I mean, the the suspension is is instant when they touch those buttons. Um, the you know, it's very much a spaceship <clears throat> uh, on on the dash, and it's 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 a nice looking machine. And it sounds nice too. So. Yeah, you know the, the guys that love uh, loves power sports really let us uh, cry out crawl all over that thing. Nice. You'll have the same dash on your on your nine hundred turbo though. Yeah, just that one had it. I don't know whether anything that I got's gonna have that just yet. You know, I know some of the guys are struggling with some of those components, but mm -hmm. yeah, see. yeah, that's the thing. It's a little lower stance, and it's a uh, and it's got the launch control, but and the color scheme. I mean, I don't think there's anything 
too much different other than that, but people are probably going to be yelling at the computer right now. But the, uh, yeah, the, the Mog Zeds, it, it's pretty sexy to see it in person. So, um, yeah, like Love Loves it, Motorsports had a few of them there uh, in Beloit and they were all put together. And, you know, the guys at the shop there, um, they got a beautiful, beautiful store up there, um, lots to pick from. And they had a couple already out and they let us pull one out in the snow. And there wasn't enough to let us take it for a ride, but uh, it was, it was a, it's a beautiful machine. I think that whoever has one of those on order won't be disappointed. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah, there's a couple in the chat right now. Sled Addicts got theirs. Neil Owens waiting on his. It should be in soon. So, yeah, it's uh, it's um, it's going to be pretty cool to see them out on the trail. That's for sure. We got the Back demo. We got the the live demo of the launch control, and man, that yeah. thing comes on. Holy! Yeah, sounds wild. That T Cat's going to be nice too. I want to try one. Well, actually, hopefully, I get to ride with Greg too. I want to try that power steering. I want to see what that's like. Yeah, that could be a game changer for sure you know they use them in four wheelers yeah. man it makes a huge difference less fatigue oh yeah well we've, yeah, we it's not sure. the first time we've seen that in the snowmobile world but i think no this i remember is a yeah. better delivery right yeah it's a better mm -hmm. system yeah yeah well it's a lighter it's lighter now they've got it they've got the whole thing figured out right so but uh yeah so everyone says i've got a screw loose but here we've got a whole bunch of them in the background here <laughs> Yeah, they're those are very labor intensive to manufacture, but we have great success with them. Yeah, and are they are they uh, carbide tip in the end of them, or what? What's yeah, is so it just the shape of them? No, that it's all carbide chips that we uh, so we manufacture the host screw, and then the carbide chips um, are added, and then they're, they're all hand silver brazed. Yeah, sweet. That is wicked. Yeah, there we go again. Sorry, I got some repetitive ones here. This shot's awesome. Now that ice is actually blue. It's coming out green for some reason. But the uh, uh, is this you, Clark? Yeah, that's me a long time ago. Yeah, that's on an old S chassis. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what? I I love that machine. I, I bought that off a uh, off a friend of mine's dad, and uh, it was around for. I babied that thing. I you know but probably my first new sled um he bought it only had it for like a weekend and didn't like it and changed it out so i bought it from him and i drove that thing for i don't know 12 or 12 and a half thousand kilometers flawless not one hiccup and i sold it to a guy and he rode it for about 600 feet in the halberton forest and rode it off so it, it had a great life up until it changed hands oh no oh no that's crazy yeah and it was never driven on water or anything like that when you sold it right no, <laughs> only no, that's, how I clean, that's how I clean the underside of it. I, it was always it. clean looked, after every ride. Brand new, right? <laughs> Looks like the guy looked underneath it. Man, that's clean underneath there. <laughs> David Barker wants to know if you can drive those screws onto the bottom of boots. Oops. Yeah, so the guys that we work with at the postal services down in the U.S., um, you know, and different um, utility companies. Um, we'll put those into the bottom of the boots or those there's those uh, strap on style um, boot components that you can put on that. I think you can get it. Some of the retail outlets up here, um, the guys will buy those and put those in. Yeah. So we do make smaller ones for that exact reason. Nice. This is something that, uh, I think it was, I think it was, uh, John had shown this product, uh, when we were doing his show, uh, go into some depth on, in detail on, on this product. So we use the ski saver for a variety of reasons. Um, one, uh, obviously it's doing exactly what it's meant to do and it's, it's protecting the keel, uh, of your, of your ski. Um, we can't necessarily control, uh, what some of those things we're going to encounter, uh, on a ride, uh, be it logging roads or crossing roads, or, you know, just a snurdy old trail that's beat up. Um, so that's going to take some of that wear and abrasion off the keel and put it on our product. So usually we see, um, customers do two sets of ski savers for every one set of bars. So they'll come and replace those thinking that they need to replace their bars and then they just update those. Um, it also allows us to dictate the depth of the host bar to the snow. Um, so we can 
set those up in different thicknesses if we need to. Um, over the years, as the sleds seem to refine themselves in handling, uh, we've kind of narrowed it down to just one size that, that works for everybody. Um, but it allows us to choke back some of that um, wear and abrasion on the host bar as well. Nice. Yeah, those so, safety so skis are huge, eh? <clears throat> Yeah, and it's not a complicated product to order. Um, it, like if you're ordering from the U.S. and and you're ordering from your website and you're shipping it direct to them, there there it's not a complicated product to order. As far as you need to know the certain thickness, you've got it pretty much tuned to all the same thickness. Yeah, um, absolutely. And you know, to so for the guys that you know are on that website and they're ordering. Um, the website's designed to automatically defer to where it lands. So if you're a U.S. customer, it will automatically uh, allocate that order to the U.S. side. Um, if you're a Canadian customer, it'll automatically allocate it to us up here. So we will be shipping from the appropriate side of the border. So our customers don't have to deal with any of those surprise um, border things that come up or the encumbrances that come with it. So we ship directly to up here and then we reship to our customers from up here. How sweet. Yeah, I, I see that being a good product that it would give you that added depth. So it's almost like a shaper bar type thing, pushing that carbide deeper in the snow. Oh, look at the hoof we got going on here. <laughs> yeah, when when they say Clark has a leg up on the competition, they, they really mean it. Uh, I, that, uh, that come, it was on the trail and come flying out of the backside of one of the guys that I was following and I narrowly avoided that and I... I I have a YouTube or a GoPro video uh, of that flying over top of my helmet um, that I cannot, for some reason, get sent to you. So that was the best that we could do. Oh, that's crazy. That's that's awesome. It's a deer leg for those listening on the podcast version of this thing. Yeah. Hoof and all. Yeah. <laughs> How long ago was that? That's an old Hero 2 on your head there. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a few years ago, that one. And then we had some really good ones with... Um, with moose jumping out in front of us, my brother and I have a good one where we're kind of riding staggered and it came right between the two of us. And I, they were just bigger videos that I couldn't get sent to you, which is unfortunate. Ooh, but uh, this was, wow. yeah, the, the I'll take the deer flying deer legs over the, um, those big hairy moose. horses any day. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah. That would hurt. Holy. You yeah. hit one of them. That would hurt. Yeah. Yeah. I don't imagine you'd feel it for long. No. That's no. one of my worst, worst worries is hitting a, a moose, especially in Quebec or, or Northern Ontario. It's your biggest, biggest worry. I've come real close on three and that's three too many. Yeah. 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 That's when you want to have your fast track studs there, Rich, in your ice right? ripper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anything, anything, an anchor, the studs, you name it, a, a yeah. parachute, whatever yeah. they can get you around. Oh, yeah. parachute. oh man. Jeez. Yeah. Scary, man. I love it. The expression on your face says it all there, though, bud. <laughs> it's amazing. This is a great group. We got a 1,200 skidoo there, and we go on to Polaris. This is a few years old, too, by the look of it. Here's yeah, my old I Renegade think, in the back there. There's a couple old ones in there. So that's kind of the earlier stages of us getting things uh, ironed out and what we were doing up here. Um, for That was probably one of the first fleet of sleds that started running triple points up here. Oh, oh nice. is that right? So what, how long, how old is that? Are those brand new sleds there? Are we looking at like a 2009 photo or? Yeah. The, some of those, the, those were all the guys we started working with first. So the, the, the two cats at the end um, were probably some of the earlier turbos that ever made it into Canada. We actually, my brother and I purchased those down in the U S and brought them up. That may have been their first ride up here. No way. Right on. Yeah, there's a that's a that's a so what year's that chassis too? So that's like 2014, yeah, at least you know, 2013, yeah, 2014, 2013, 13, yeah, yeah, because yeah. yeah, that's an XS chassis, so yeah, that's cool. Awesome. So that's when the triple carbides came out, uh, Clark, like eight well, years ago. Well, they were ago. out before, but that was when we really started to push them up here, um, and, and work with them more. So we, you know, you, we went to the guys that we were riding with and, you know, everyone got on board and, you know, you go on these rides. So we tried to take a mixed bag of sleds with us on these trips so where we can start getting customer feedback and rider feedback in different conditions and, you know, riding in cold and riding in fluffy snow and 
hard pack trails and you know that's the whole there's been a lot of hours put into the snow of making these things work oh absolutely is there is there one model or brand of sled that that the triple points excel on like make a mild difference on over any other sled out there um i think it does a great improvement for all of them um guys come to us with anything that struggles to handle um right out of the box so you know the the tuner ski was always a bit of a trouble one um those nitros were always difficult to handle um so those guys you know right as soon as the guy buys those they tend up and uh, end up in our lap um but i don't know that we set aside a, uh, a particular sled that excels more with the triple points than anyone else i think they all really see the benefits from that carbide nice well, that's the thing I want, I'm trying to get Roscoe to handle better than, uh, and it was doing okay last year, but I think, I think that, uh, that the triple points would be the, the key, you know, and I got, uh, I got John's little track link as well for the rear skid. So I think oh, you did get it. Think, eh? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I showed it last time. I think it was last week or two weeks ago. Oh, I think really? I showed it anyway, but yeah, that's, uh, I haven't installed it yet, but that's to come. That's yeah, gonna be. That's happens. gonna make a huge difference, man. I, I'm oh. I'm looking forward to he hearing you after you put that uh, both those on. I, I just like the novelty of it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So, but uh, this looks like it's at a. Where's this? It looks like at a trade show, like a loading dock or something. That's on a ferry, ferry crossing uh, crossing the Saguenay River. Um, mm -hmm. I, nice. I had to. I had to. Uh, one of our customers told us to, to do this ride and. You know, unfortunately, we didn't get to see a lot of it in the daylight. We we had the temperatures were very, very mild, um, were really, really soft. Like guys were right down where they weren't even riding with their jackets. They just had hoodies on. And then Jeez. it plummeted uh, down to well into like minus 30. So a lot of the sleds we lost um, just they, they had to go on tilt and loads. They couldn't they couldn't go anymore. And then we got stuck following a moose for about. I would say 45 kilometers. Um, and oh, wow. it, it looked like it had spent some time on the trail. So you, you know, you know, obviously you don't want to run these things. So you're giving them their space, but it maximized yep. my patience quite a bit. We missed our supper. We missed the ability to get any fuel. Um, and I think we had our own private ferry to, uh, to cross the, uh, cross the river. <laughs> the rest of the team had already crossed an hour and 45 minutes before on the tilt and load that we put them on. So it was an interesting experience to be wheeled right onto the ferry, but that's, that's their process. Right on. Yeah, is this a Drummond yes. Island ferry? Uh, it's right. It's just to the northeast of Saint Raymond is where that is. Um, in Tedesac is where we crossed. So whatever the name of that ferry is. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, there was yeah. some chatter in the chat. Greg was asking about is that the ferry going over to Drummond, Drummond Island, and and uh, said there's good trails on the other side. It's funny you talk about that, Clark, with wildlife when you come across it, right? Because they use the trails because it's less stress on them. And they're, some of them get stubborn. I came across a timber wolf 20 years ago. And, and these things are huge. Like the head of a timber wolf is like the size of a horse. And I followed behind him for a while, but he wouldn't move. And I was too too afraid to go by him just in case he lunged at you, right? So, Well, but, one of the old guys we ride with is quite, you know, he's a, he's a big farmer and had absolutely no concern about this moose at all and waited for a, a gap in the trail and just passed it. And it turned okay. broadside and was not impressed. And yeah. I kind of felt like that was our only opportunity to make that thing angry. And I refused to push the animal. I mean, it's essentially we're in their yard. So yeah, yeah. we waited it out, but... I was, it had way better patience than I did. I wanted around that thing <laughs> and it was not letting us go by. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Then once you're on the Island, there's an 11 mile ice bridge over to Canada. Greg says, yeah. that's cool. Does that sound right? Yeah. I, uh, yeah. We, I, mean, I don't know if it was that trip that we did that. I think we've done that before, um, but I don't ferry. know that we did that one. None of the ice was super safe when we did that anyways. It was really, really mild. It was the last, it was right close to Easter. Like we were probably the last guys to go through. Wow. Yeah, you're, it looks lonely on that boat right there. Yeah, pretty dry. Well, that was about 20 after 3 in the morning. So I think. Oh, jeez. 
unless you were uh, unless you were the guy driving that boat, you really had no business being there, including us. <laughs> it was awful. I love it. Yeah, this looks like you got a little wet here. Yeah, so that's some of the the stuff that you can experience on those rides. So, um, you know, this this particular area has has stung us a few times. So we did the freeze and rain thing. Um, that's what our sleds looked like in the morning. Um, that really just changes your whole interest in trying to ride the next morning. And we, I think I sent you a picture of the, all the sleds uh, on a tilt and load. Um, oh, I believe you did. Yeah. I believe yeah. it's coming up. And uh, we, you know, that was the one morning and the next morning it, it rained so hard, there was no snow left. Um, so we had to tilt and load out of town until we got back up the hill, like back up the mountain high enough to find snow. The guy that owned the hotel owned the towing company, company so we helped us out to get out of town. <laughs> right on. That's, that's awesome. That's convenient, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it did help. Yeah. yeah. The, so you get you get out for a few trips, obviously, uh, Clark, you, as many trips as you can every winter? Or? I try to get out as much as we can. I mean, um, yeah. you know, you always want to ride more, obviously, but um, I'm you know, I'm fortunate enough to be able to get out and, and do the rides that I want to do. And, and, you know, we put the miles on when we go. We have a good group. Um, it's usually well planned. So, you know, if we're going to go, we try to put on fairly decent K each day and, and get to where we want to be. You know, there's a lot of surprises, obviously, that can come with that. But, you know, it's it's usually well planned and laid out pretty early in the race. Right on. Yeah, that's neat. Some good photos. Yeah. What are we looking at here? So this picture, some of our shim kits, um, you know, obviously each, each ski that we work with and each uh, rubber dampener requires a different solution to shimming. Um, you know, there's a lot of guys that have their own ideas of what shims are all about and how to do them um, to each his own, but there's a little bit more to it than what we do to get to what works with our bars. Um, so our bars are designed to work with the way our shims set that ski. So each one integrate differently with each other. Nice. What material is that made of? <laughs> so it's made out of the same plastic that your skis made out of. Um, okay. So it's a very high impact material that doesn't really get affected by the cold. Nice. And it has a little bit of flex to it as well. Very minimal flex. Um, oh, is that right? Of of it. Um, when you span out um, the ski, the longer away from the thicker part of the ski, the more flexible it will become. But when you bring that plastic down to those sizes uh, and the angles that we cut it at. That's, there's not a whole lot of give there. Yeah. Tony cat says, do you, do you recommend to shim a curve or CNA ski on a cat or Polaris? Yes. Mm -hmm. There you go. So the same, the same problem exists um, in no matter what you do. So the, the issues are um, where the carbide wears and where it should be wearing. And that's what essentially we're correcting with that product. Yeah, the stock one from Polaris is brutal, man. You lose you lose over half your carbide, and it's bad. Like the angle is really bad. That's I'm looking forward to changing it this year, and the skis too. You think they'd fix something like that? Because that's a common. Yeah, it's weird. It's, it's weird. Known man. for years, right? Yeah, yeah. So, someone must like it in the engineering department. <laughs> no, it's good though. It keeps Clark busy too, right? It does. Yes, absolutely. He'd, he'd still be busy if they if they used a different ski. Don't kid yourself. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Another good looking lineup of sleds there. Those that's a player's adventure. Those things are beasts, aren't they? Trojan yeah, horse of sleds. One of the old. That's the old apex. Um, that one there. Um, it did the entire first. 200k out of the trailer uh, Ooh, we had a ton of issues with the a-arm it fell out um so we can see it about 30 bucks yeah. in hose clamps from the hardware store and a ratchet strap underneath and we put it all together and the guy had no choice our chaser truck had to leave so it rode 1400k like that and never Ooh. wiggled once Jeez. wow front end must have been heavy wow that's wild yeah that heavier insane. yeah 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 she's sitting a little low <laughs> yeah, it was quite the MacGyver operation, but uh, it, you know, it, you did it. It, it finished the trip and got it home. Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. yeah, that's neat. How many times do you go to Quebec in a year? Um, last couple of years, it seemed like last year was a little bit more difficult with the uh, with the curfews, right? Um, 
getting to your destination before Betty buys and uh, getting um, settled in um, was a challenge. So it really restricted the type of riding and where we could go and ride uh, for the year. But we try to do a fairly decent amount of riding in Quebec. Uh, the snow shows up early. Uh, it stays a little bit longer. Um, the trails are set up uh, perfectly for us to be able to test what we want to test and design what we want to design. And because the trail network is so big uh, and so vast, the traffic seems to dissipate out a little bit more than what you would see here in Ontario. Like there's no way you're, you know, setting up tools and pictures and cameras and stuff in Ontario and and not no. setting somebody back from their ride that they're waiting to do. So we find, you know, a little hole in the wall to try and go do that stuff. Yeah. Good plans. Matt Darnell, he wants to know, does Bergstrom have a recommendation guide for wear bars per sled and track setup? We, there was a fairly decent recommendation guide um, on our original website. We've just changed our website and we're porting over some of those pages one by one and just kind of bringing it up to date. Um, some of those guides, um, although were very knowledgeable, it didn't really apply to um a lot of the today sleds. So we had to bring that up to date. So if there's any questions or concerns regarding that, um, either location, uh, Canada or US, will be able to field those questions for you, or you're welcome to send an email, or there's an inquiry uh, tab on the website. You can send an inquiry question and somebody will get back to you based on where you're located. Sweet, sweet. How, what's the response time like? like? If you send an email to your contact form on the site, do you, do you typically have a set response time that you like to try to get back about? to you within the same working day? Um, you know, be it that there's no unforeseen circumstances, but you should hear from somebody. Uh, there's an acknowledgement uh, that says that your, you know, your response has been accepted. Um, and then it just get depending upon how many come in, it could be, you know, a matter of a few hours or it could be, you know, within the day. Nice. Good plan. Well, that's, I've heard you, your customer service is second to none. So I don't think he can go wrong. And how do they find you? Like, where did, what, what is the website URL and, and, uh, why do they find you online? So we're at bergstromskags.net is our new website. Um, and we're, we're pretty fortunate. We do some stuff with some magazines, um, but we have incredible customers. Um, and we, uh, Clayton and I have really put a lot of time into, um, developing, very much customer service driven outcome. Uh, we really try to work with our customers. We're riders ourselves. So we understand that although it's just a weekend, um, that could be your, your first weekend. It could be your last weekend or it could be your only weekend um, for some guys. So we do our very best to try and accommodate everybody as much as we can. Um, so we get incredible word of mouth advertising. Um, we haven't had to dig in a whole lot on, on, putting things up in certain places. Um, it seems to just work out well. And then, you know, we had opportunities like we have here today with you guys um, that really get us out there, um, which is, which is great. But we, we really try to use that customer service window as our opportunity to get guys um, to help sell it for us. Yeah. Soda pop 20 says you need to have your dealers market your product better. Leon's Leon's loves park motorsports specifically. They mustn't promote your product. <laughs> it's so, amazing. So now Lost Park is where we were um, up uh, two weeks ago. Um, and, you know, the, some of those dealers, um, you know, and I get it. We're not the only guys there. Um, you know, everyone's got a little skin in the game when you come to a dealer like that. Um, so they, you know, they, I guess they probably market it um, as equally as they can. Um, and they all have their own idea uh, as to who is going to see best by that product. Um so we try to give them all the tools they need to help the customer. Um, how they deliver that to the customer is is an internal uh, thing, and you know maybe they it could be a rider specific thing. It's hard to say. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing though. The, my four different riding groups that I ride with, uh, Clark, they all all of them talk about your product. So it's it's a pretty amazing to see you know to hear from all four different groups that I ride with that they don't know each other and everyone swears by the Bergstrom's product. So it's good. Yeah, when Clay and I sat down and originally decided, I, I mean, I kind of started working with Scott a little bit before and I come up with this idea and then, you know, I went and sat down with my brother and we come up with an idea of how we wanted to do that and build it here. Um, we built it 
as though we were riders. And for years, a lot of the things that we purchased were based on how things were referred to us. Um, and that's, you know, you're out riding with the guys and somebody would buy something on a whim. And, you you know, first thing you do when you stop is you go over and you look at it and you talk about it for 10 minutes, right? That's just what happens. So we wanted to figure out how we became those guys. We wanted to figure out how we got talked about on the trail amongst riders. So that's where we went to. We attacked that area first. Um, and that seems to be okay for us. You know, we, we got to get one guy in the group to, to come have a look and then the rest seem to follow. Yeah, no, for sure. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the thing I, I last the last, this is Peterborough, <laughs> the last Toronto show yeah. uh, that uh, my buddy Dean and I, Dino and I would go to, he would run to the Bergstrom booth cause he had to upgrade his carbides every time. Right. It's like, Bergstrom, we gotta find them. It was awesome. Well, yeah. we, we get, nice get stacked up like pretty that. deep in Toronto. Um, you know, the the guys at the show, they we we pick. Uh, we have a bit of a myth of our madness as to why we pick that booth. Um, we like the fact that first of all, nobody wants to carry around our bars, so we try to get close to that main entrance slash exit so that they can pick them oh, up on their idea. way at the door. Smart. Yeah. But we 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 put our booth at the hallway for the washrooms because every guy in the world that brings their wife has to wait for their wife to go to the washroom and end up <laughs> divulging trade show secrets here. Uh, maybe you, should, yeah, maybe so you shouldn't be saying this stuff. It works. It works out real well for us. Um, and you know, everyone wants to stand there and, and talk for a couple of minutes while the wife is avoiding being in that show. So it's perfect. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Smart idea though. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, you just now you're not going to get anywhere near the washroom because everybody will be booking that space. So. It's 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 in our agreement with with the guys that do those shows. That's that's our stuff. That's where we go. So, it's um, it, it works out it works out well for us. But we we always get in the same spot. But it's it's pandemonium. Like we we got guys stacked like four or five groups deep waiting to get up to that booth. Yeah. Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. So. Oh, well, this is there, there's there's other reasons why your booth in Peterborough was our favorite booth, right, Rich? Oh yeah, that was awesome, man. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. That's cool. Here we go. Beautiful. This is this matches the mock Z right there, doesn't it? Oh yeah, right. Yeah, it's, it's it's close in colors. Yep, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So when you flip it in the corner, then you you get your your carbides match. Yeah. That's funny. Is this a different material here? No. So we, we just finished the two different lines in different colors, um, you know, for, for our own internal purposes. And it just sets them aside uh, one from the other. So we, we just finished the bars in a different color. Yeah. Right nice. I like it. It looks high end. Does that coating wear off or is it pretty solid? Uh, it, it does wear off fairly quickly i mean it's you know essentially it's it's just goes through like similar to a painting process to get it to there um yeah. not much of what you can do uh, would stay on there for very long um depending upon where you're riding but you know it's it's on there long enough to look pretty yeah because yeah. the majority of them all come black right and they wear off really quick too right so yeah yeah i don't know that there's a way like we've looked at other ways to finish them um and it's uh, essentially all going to do the same thing There's that, that green sky again. It's actually very nice blue in the photo. For some reason, we're getting some, some tint there. We spent a lot of time with that particular chassis trying to get things set up and, and get it to, to go to the snow. And then the Procross chassis that came after was, you know, like the newer Procross stuff seemed to go a lot smoother for us. That one there, just a little bit heavier. Um, than what the Yamaha motor was. Yeah. Greg says, look at that beautiful green sled. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now is this Ontario? It's got, I see the power lines like that. Uh, it seems yeah. To that's be Ontario. Ontario. Yeah. yeah. That's what I thought. Right. So dominators back fell as he drove through a white out, white out snowstorm to get here. That's <laughs> nice. Right on. Yeah. Snow's coming. Oh, for sure. That's all the pictures that he sent in, I think. Unless I missed something. Awesome, 
probably awesome. didn't. That was good. Probably one of the best so far. That was good. Yeah. Good variety. It shows that you actually ride. Yeah, you know exactly. what I mean? Yeah. 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 We, we try to put on a good deal of miles and we get a chance to ride in a lot of cool places, right? We've done a lot of up New York, uh, upstate New York stuff and a lot, like there's not much of Ontario. We haven't seen a lot of Quebec, um, around near the shop, you know, in, in that, the whole, uh, Wisconsin area, we've had a chance to put some miles on. So we've been pretty fortunate to, to ride in a lot of cool places. Um, and for a lot of years, um, you know, Santa Claus dropped uh, my brother and I off years ago, uh, a set of snow scoots, and we've been uh, hooked ever since. Um, nice. So it's just no turning back. That's awesome. Yeah. Now That's awesome. there was two sizes of engines there. Did you have the Did you have the big bad monster one twenty five or what size did you have on? No, those? we had we had eighties, um, and neither one of us were big enough to kickstart them. So I used to at, at one point in time I used to put my brother up on my back like a piggyback and jump on the kickstart to be able to get it to go because uh, <laughs> my my dad was of the opinion that if you wanted to ride it you had to learn how to do it all. So it was figured out um, if we would get yeah. it stuck. You know, we'd, you know, we'd have to double back to the house and get a snow shovel and spend three hours heaving this thing out of wherever we buried it. And, you know, it, it never changed all the way up until, um, you know, we went into the bigger sleds. Um, and my dad had a racing background in, in the in the oval racing and, we, you know, was quite a good rider. Um, but there was, you guys got to figure it out and wreck some stuff on your own before I start teaching you. That's awesome. <laughs> great, great sleds to learn on, though. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It, they had that goofy reverse Kickstarter too. Like it went, it went forward instead of back. Is it, it was the yeah, end. And if you weren't quite big enough to kick it, it kicked almost as hard back uh, and stands oh, yeah. right back up onto the running board. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah, that was hurt, man. Wow. Many I wonder if you, if, if you could actually find one of those old original snow scoots, if you could actually find a track or parts for it, you know? There, you can you still see them float around every once in a while. They're looking for a pretty penny to get those things now, but I, I don't know that the parts supply is is quite as good as it used to be. Um, yeah, no, you'd think not. It's like the Corey's got a years, cat. Yeah, ten years or so ago, my brother and I managed to get into a barn in upstate New York, and the guy probably had about two hundred of them in there, um, all what? different ones. And he had all sorts of parts and skis and tracks and all sorts of stuff. And it was a really cool barn find, but um, he wasn't willing to part ways with it. He knew what he had. And that was yeah. probably the last graveyard of those things that I've seen personally. Wow. Wow. Daredog says you can still get parts and Brad Hitchcock says, yep, you can. So that's oh, kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. I know Corey's got a, a kitty cat and he said that uh, he looked hard, hard, long and hard and he actually found a track for it. So it was a, uh, and he said they're rare. It was a brand new track, still rolled up, nice and small, and nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's um, you know, I guess if you look, you look hard enough, you'll find it. That's for sure. Yeah, for sure. Really? Yeah, I would like to have that one back. You you look back through some of the sleds you had, and you you, know, you at the time you decide to get rid of them. I wish I could have kept them all uh, for one reason yeah. or another. Yeah. But that's definitely one that I wish I'd have kept. Yeah, it's like my yeah, son's mini Z right. was the very first ones they came out. We'll never get rid of that when they first came out. No. Back in ninety eight. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't either. Yours is a special one as well, right? Yeah. So yeah. No. I wouldn't I wouldn't touch that at all. So what have you got any ideas for new product coming out? Or is it kind of the same as like Chris from Fast Track was going like it the industry is is what it is and it's a the product doesn't there's not really much more ways you can innovate it. Uh, what what kind of things have you got cooking or can, can you tell us? Your... Well, we, I mean, we can tell you some stuff, um, you know, really the, the sled market dictates what we need to do. Um, what, what's the, what's the new problem and how are we going to fix it? Um, so that's where we start. Uh, and we review that each year. Um, Chris is right in, in, you know, in what he's saying is there's only so many ways you can design a stud and there's only so many ways you can make a carbide. Um, it's just how do you apply it to what particular track is coming down the pipe next? That's really our biggest challenge. Um, yeah, that's true. One right? of the things that we're going to continue to design and to get out onto the market is we went with the pro steer and the pilot skis uh, to make our rubber dampeners um, to see what the landscape would be and how people would, re would respond to them in place of the shim kit so we'll probably 
continue to expand um, in that world and make more of those um, and have more of those available because um, we're not making those rubber dampeners for all of the current skis yet. Oh, I see. Cool. Okay. It's it's nice to see that you're still developing though. That's great. And and have the flexibility to, to change as new products come out. Yeah. And it's, it's a lot of, I mean, it's a lot of work to get those angles right when you flip the whole thing upside down and get it to still deliver to the snow the way you want it to. Um, you know, it, it, you'd think it'd be a simple process, but it's not quite that simple. Um, so not only do you have to design it, um, and then you have to test it and then you tweak it and then you go into manufacturing. So there's a bit of a process that uh, goes long before we get it out um, to our customers. And we want to test that for a little while. So there's some things that we're, we're still testing um, to make sure that the results are what we want before we're going to come back down and put it out into our roster of things to offer to the customer. So there's some things in the, in the, in the think tank that are on the way, but um, you know, getting all of the things that we wanted executed uh, during COVID has obviously not been very easy. So I don't know that we'll see anything new pop up in this particular riding season, but we should see some other things coming down the pipe for next year. Very good. Cool. Good to know. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And then are you on social media? Uh, like where, uh, where can people find you other than, than your website? Yes. Yeah, so we have a Facebook presence. We have an Instagram presence. Um, and then we seem to like, we have some great followers on just about all of the forums. Um, you could spend hours uh, chasing things around on those forums um, and everyone, you know, again, circling back to our customers, um, you know, people ask very generic questions, you know, what are you running for carbides? What's your best carbide or what's, what's your suggestion in carbides? And we get a lot of traction on those types of, of, of posts and, um, we get tagged in it all the time. We try to get in there and, and, and get as much of it looked after, but that could chew up an awful lot of your time. <laughs> for sure. Oh, for sure. For sure. We have and some really I good know, guys that do it for us. And, and then as far as your YouTube goes, you, you had some videos. Are you building that up as well? Yeah. So we have some videos that we're working with. Um, you know, we've got some that we've done ourselves. Um, we have stuff that we've worked with, with uh, Ryan at Canuck Power Sports. Um, he's very, uh, very good at that sort of thing. Um, and we've got some more installation videos, um, coming for our, our, our website. So we tore down that original website for a lot of reasons, um, customer, um, requests, and it was not exactly fitting what we were wanting, but that was, uh, it came with the company. Um, so we, we changed that. Um, and now we're going to continue to broaden that out. So, um, there is some, there's lots of YouTube stuff out there that's not exactly ours uh, exactly, but you know, it's, there's lots to, there's lots to read and learn and watch if you want to dig in and find it. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Nice. No, that's good. Yeah. But, uh, and then, and then, uh, did you have anything else you wanted to show as, as far as, uh, you got any products there that, uh, you want to hold up for us or uh... I, I, all I brought today with me was I, I just brought a set of the, the triple points because I didn't know whether or not we were going to be able to get some of those pictures I sent you to work. Um, and I brought a set of the rubbers and I, and I think um, that's all I brought with me here today to in case the questions came up about what we needed. Um, most of the stuff we have um, is pretty self-explanatory. Um, I didn't bring skis and all the rest of that stuff. Um, Ideally, if I was in a perfect world, I'd be in the shop with a sled, but just not going to line up for today. No, that no, that's good. fine. No, <laughs> that's good. No, we, we, you've answered a lot of questions. If anyone else has any questions for Clark while he's here, fire them up in the chat and, uh, and we'll, uh, we'll take care of them right away. But, uh, no, it's, uh, it's been a good wealth of knowledge for sure. I, I think we, uh, Rich and I will be spending some money shortly. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Get my order in for the carbides. Yeah, we have you know, we have a lot of guys that come to us for uh, a lot of different reasons. Um, but as far as any of the OEM skis go, or any of the aftermarket skis, um, there's really not much we can't provide for. Um, there is a you know we'll, we will go back to some of the older stuff. Um, anybody who's looking for that real old stuff, we try to encourage them to come to us in the spring so that we can, you know, go back into those older dyes and stuff and fab them through the summer months and deliver them for the fall. Um, but we're, we're fairly versed in, in being able to make whatever it is that you need. Um, 
especially for yeah, some that's of the, cool. you know, the smaller stuff. Yeah. There you go. Now, is your is your research and development can it go on in the summertime, or do you have to be on snow when you're testing products and tweaking them and and things like that? No, so we can dry fit a lot of this stuff in the shop, and we don't necessarily need the st- the snow. We're we're looking for a, a particular outcome um, without disclosing too much, but we're looking for something um, specific when we design all of this stuff, um, and that has to show up uh, in the end result of when that machine heads to the snow or heads to the ground. Um, once we get to that particular achievement we then take that and then put it to the snow. So we're fairly well designed in what we want before we make it to the snow. I don't want to bring a whole menu of tools with me out into the wilderness to test this stuff. I'm looking for very small adjustments to get to the outcome. And if not, then we'll, we go right back to the drawing board um, and start all over, but we're pretty close to what we want on each uh, prototype. And when you hit the snow, like after after a season of development, how close are you? Are you like ninety nine percent there, or is it, or does it vary? We're pretty close. Um, my brother has a pretty quick uh, system of what um, what we're looking to achieve. Um, we both have the ideas. Uh, we both have the 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 plan, um, and then we'll we'll make it. Um, my my brother. Is, is quite handy with that stuff in the shop. Um, so I'll, if I say we need a little more or a little less or a little left or a little right, um, I just send them back in there and it comes out and then we go back to the snow. And then we try to run with those products with a variety of sleds or a variety of guys that we know that have tested stuff for us in the past. And we try to make sure that we're getting the results from them just because we like it and we're happy. Um, we send it to guys in different areas. So we have guys on, you know, either side of Canada, we have guys that are up North and we have guys in the U S that we send this stuff to. And we're looking to hear um, feedback from different snow conditions and different riding types to make sure that what they've always got, they're getting from this as well. So we, you know, then we, from that point, we move into releasing it out to everyday customers. Right Right on. That sounds, sounds like a good process, right? Your brother, what's his background? Is he an engineer? Is he just learned from the school of hard knocks? School of hard knocks. um, We were both pretty uh, self-taught guys in, um, what we do. I mean, we've got a lot of, you know, experience in that stuff. We, we grew up in a shop environment, um, you know, in the auto world. Um, and you know, you, once you learn how to work with metals and plastics and you learn how they work with each other, how you apply it is what it is. Um, we, we have a great system. Um, we both tend to do things really good. Um, but we do them even better when we don't, you know, cut each other's grass. Um, <laughs> yeah. If, we were both to attempt to do the same task. Um, my, my guess would be it won't go well, um, <laughs> but we both do what we do very well f- with each other. Um, so I like certain parts of things and he likes the other part and that works out really well. And then when we reach a crossroads where you know we're stumped on something, uh, between the two of us, we can get what we want. So he's uh, he's very uh, good with his hands. He's clever with how to get things to show up in the machine. Um, and, uh, you know, he enjoys those challenges and I enjoy giving them to him. So it's it's, it's entertaining. Um, you know, I, I try to bring him a puzzle and see if he can come out of the shop with a solution. It's great. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Sounds like good teamwork. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Well, I know you guys at the show when I've seen you, you get along great. So that's something to be said when you're standing there for hours on end and you're still happy with each other at the end of the day. <laughs> oh, we have, we have, a, we you know we have a great relationship with each other. When we play with each other, we work hard, you know, we, you know, we ride, we do all the stuff that, uh, you know, our downtime, you know, we do all that same stuff with each other too. So it makes, it makes for a good uh, work environment. Um, you know, we have to throw minimal wrenches at each other, which is great. I mean, it's, uh, we don't, we, we don't have a lot of conflict in what we're trying to do, but you know, we're both trying to get to the same thing. Right. And as long as we're trying to keep that customer service, uh, you know, level as high as we are, um, there's no time for that. We just got to get what the customers want out and get it in the snow and get these guys happy. Right yeah. On. Nice. What, what trade shows are you going to be at? Like what shows are coming up that, that, uh, that the people can find you at? Well, shows this year are dicey, right? Because it's always, it's also last minute on everything. Um, it, it, historically, Scott did a lot of the U.S. shows, uh, and we always looked after things up here. Um, and with the travel uh, 
hindrances that we've had to face this year, we weren't able to do any of those U.S. shows. So we, we just didn't do it. Now, a lot of our dealers that sell our stuff were at those shows. So I guess we were there in some capacity. Um, that will change in the future. We'll have more of a U.S. presence at those shows. Um, and I mean, you, those mean, you, don't, you are, don't like getting a Q-tip shoved up your nose? Regularly? Uh, no, no, it, that's, there's, there's a lot going on there for that whole experience. Uh, even <laughs> to just get down there a few weeks ago is, uh, I mean, it, there's a lot going on, um, yeah. to be able to do what would be a basic trip. I, and I get that that's all for the right reason. Um, but it is, there's a lot of inconvenience to be able to do what should be a very simple operation. Uh, and I think that will get better in time, which will allow us to do more, um, on the South side of the border. This year nice. we were ready to do Toronto. Um, that obviously changed, so we couldn't do that. Um, and then we wanted to. Uh, we did Peterborough. That seemed to work out okay. Um, and then we'll we show up at some of the smaller stuff. We'll be at um, some smaller shows, like just like Snowmobile Club open houses and some dealer stuff around the area. And then we'll be at the Canuck Power Sports event up in Cochrane. Um, so we'll we'll be where we can be um, without it being too difficult. But everyone's really game time decision on everything. So it's really hard to plan um, to be anywhere and then it be canceled, you know, 10 days before you have to put a lot of planning and, and allocating some time and product to be at those things. Yeah. And staffing too. Right. So, yeah, it's, it's a lot, right. So you're, we're, we're happy to get on board. Um, the shows this year have been pretty good at letting us know whether it's going to go or not go with enough time. I would like to see a better outcome next year um, for some of these things for how the, the cities or the areas at which they're going to be held in um, are ready for them. And I just don't think that the areas that some of the like Toronto wasn't ready for it. Um, no, it was, it's, it's way too big to, to go. And, you know, Peterborough, um, I think they, the way they put out that show and how they handled it, they did a fantastic job. Uh, they got a huge amount of volume, but I that think what made that a lot easier for those guys is a lot of that's outside. Um, so when you go to an outside platform, um, anybody who maybe is a little less comfortable for those crowds have the option to be elsewhere if they want to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think the, the, the Peterborough show was such a success because they had those two dudes from snowmobile sessions there, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a good time. It was nice. So that was yeah, that was, was a good. lot of fun. And we, and we hope to be able to work with the guys in the U.S. too. I mean, we're doing some work with Fast Track up here. Um, I mean, we've been working. You know, unfortunately, they're they're dealing with some uh, some struggles with supply chains, uh, as what Chris mentioned a couple weeks ago on your show. Um, you know, we work as best we can with what they can work with us on at this point, but that. Um, that relationship will grow when the, once the supply chain allows it. And I, you know, I feel bad that they're, you know, they're dealing with some of those challenges. It's where we were last year. It's not fun. Uh, and it's a lot of things that are just out of your control. So, you know, hopefully we can get to some of those U S shows. Um, even if we're just, you know, close to those guys or, or somehow their um, marketing with those guys is where we aim to be, you know, in the future at some point. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. Tony cat appreciates all this info. He, he's loving it. And, uh, yeah, he's on his yeah, way out. So, Thanks, buddy. Yeah, is he heading out? Oh, yeah, yep, he's on well, his way. Yeah, joining he's again. We, we, yeah, he's got a run. He says, So good to see him back in the chat here tonight. So, oh, Michigan Outlaws is heading out too. He says, Thank Clark for the cool products. We'll definitely be looking further into ordering some for our sleds this year. So, that's cool. Make sure you tell him you when you put the order, and if there's some notes area, put it, put it snowmobile sessions. You heard it there. So we love, we love our, our guests to hear that. So absolutely. So, yeah. It's pretty cool. But uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think I've, I don't think we've missed anything else here. Just going to quickly look up here, but it looks like we covered everything up, but thank you so much for yeah, your time good. today. Yeah. It was a really informative show and, and uh, I think the fans had a good time and we learned Thanks, something. Sir. We enjoyed the opportunity and thanks very much for having us on here. And for, you know, I've been trying to follow a lot of those questions. A lot of guys that uh, have either been with us before for customers or they're new to us this year. Um, we, you know, we'll get to everyone like we promised, but um, it's slow and steady as we go at this point. That's all we can promise. And we'll get, we'll get to everyone hopefully before, uh, before the riding starts. Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. Sure. Thanks, Clark. Thanks for making great quality products. Looking forward to trying oh, those. Yeah. Uh, Thanks very much, guys. Too. And we hope to, uh, you know, we'll hope to see you guys in the snow and 
for all the guys who made it out here, we appreciate all the questions in the chat and the support, and we'll hope to uh, we'll hope to see us somewhere on one of these trails at some point. Yeah, for sure. Well, listen, sure. if if anyone in the chat comes up with a question, you know, after the fact, feel free to to just reach out to Rich or me, and or even just email uh, Clark direct at uh, Berksum Scraggs Skeggs <laughs> Scraggs Berksum Skeggs dot net is the website, and uh, and just reach out to us and we'll ask him if you send it to us or if you ask him direct, then he'll take good care of you. I'm sure of it. Absolutely. Any so. of the, uh, any of the questionnaires on the Bergstrom Skaggs website uh, for the U S guys, or you can come directly into uh, triple point carbides at gmail.com up here. Um, we'll get us, uh, get you guys any of the questions you need answered. Um, try to outline what it is you're looking to, get answered as far as sled and the ski type. Um, a lot of guys forget to tell us that they drive X sled and they've changed to such and such ski. So we <laughs> need to know that information to give you the right answer. And either myself uh, or my brother or one of the other um, team members will call you and it will walk you through what it is we think that you need or help diagnose you with the struggle and, and we'll get you executed as quickly as we possibly can. Right nice. On. Very hands-on. Love it. Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks a lot, Clark. Appreciate it. So if you're watching this on the replay, there's two more videos that are going to come up after the credits. Uh, we think you'll love to watch. Um, but uh, thanks again, everybody, for being in the uh, in the chats. And thank you, Clark, for, for being with us. We'll have you back anytime, too. So yeah, if you have sure. any news coming up, uh, then just let us know and we'll get back on the show. Love to be back. Thanks very much, guys. I really appreciate it. And thanks for everyone who made it out. Thanks, no Clark. problem. Cheers. Yep. It's a journey.